began teaching when I was uh, about 16, was in high school. And uh, I had studied with another teacher, but I was then studying with Rebecca Froman. And uh, she encouraged me, and the teacher before that had encouraged me to start teaching, so I had a few students in the neighborhood. And they helped me with the pedagogy. It was a number of years later after I had studied with uh, Rebecca, and um, my daughter was, by that time, was already studying with Ann Kretzmer, and so I became friendly with, uh, with Ann and, and some of the other teachers, and, that, and she's one of the ones, along with Rebecca and Joyce Adelson, who were anxious to begin this group of open piano teachers. So we just had informal meetings um, in their homes, and that's how I became a charter member. As it is with musical studies, one puts a premium on the pedagogy background of our teachers. One of OPTF's charter members, Joyce Adelson, along with her twin sister Joanne, studied with Victor Babin and Vilja Vronsky, whose teachers have a direct and identifiable line going back to Ludwig van Beethoven and Johann Sebastian Bach. It is in this spirit that we pay homage to Bendetson Netzorg, one of Michigan's foremost pianists who taught piano at the Netzorg School of Piano, located at 5415 Cass Avenue in Detroit, Michigan, which is on the campus of Wayne State University. The school operated at this location from the years 1931 to 1944. I was spoiled because I had studied with Edison Netzor. And um, I just thought, you know, I'm going back to Wayne and I'm going to study with Edison Netzor. He was on the approved list of teachers you could study with. Um, they, they had um, Edison Netzor, Misha Kotler, um, Red Shaw. Th those were the three big names. And um, Mr. Netzor welcomed me with open arms and I just studied with him for the next three years and I gave my Bachelor of Music recital uh, after studying with him and he programmed the music that I would play and I remember him saying when I was well what, why don't I play this on the on the recital we don't want to make this a, a test of endurance he said <laughs> so uh, he programmed my, my music and um, I gave my recital. Of course, he was right there in the wings with me and encouraging me. He, he was that kind of person. All of us who had studied with him uh, were there for his farewell, you know, memorial service, and that was the end of an era. There was no music at his uh, uh, service or anything, and uh, he, he was greatly missed because he was a fabulous teacher, and he was a fabulous performer, too. I never had the privilege of hearing him perform, uh, but he sure did pass on all of his wonderful thoughts on music. Rebecca had uh, such an enthusiasm. She was um, a strong, um, enthusiastic uh, person and a wonderful musician. 
and she was very inspiring. And um, when she was teaching, she was very animated, and her pencils would go flying. And uh, but I learned so much from her, and my daughter also learned of so much from her. One of the things that uh, my mother and my father, who was also a professional musician, had said to me is that uh, they wanted me to enjoy music. They didn't care what I did for a profession, but don't go into music as a profession. Primarily, they said, uh, you should enjoy the music uh, rather than being worried about having it put the bread on your table. I never studied with Rebecca. Of course, I knew her, and I knew all of her students because we had played in assemblies together. And um, so uh, I think there was um, uh, Norma Chudnow and Muriel Hoffman and I who had studied with Florence Kutzer. And, um, and so the, the, the real guts of the group were um, Rebecca's students. And she was dynamic in starting the group. And so we, I don't know, we just got together and we would talk about things that you know, problems that you would have teaching and how you did things and so forth and so on. And that was that was the beginning of OPTF. It goes back so many years I can't even remember all about it. In 1978, uh, the group was formalized with a set of bylaws and Ann Kretzmer became our first president. Because the bylaws were formulated before the advent of the personal computer, they were written the old-fashioned way, on a typewriter with many visible revisions. And we also began to have meetings with outside speakers. Um, they spoke on a variety of topics, and but it was also agreed uh, to have at least one in-house uh, meeting where uh, a member would speak or we would just get together as we did in the past uh, to share ideas and, uh, and uh, work on, on teaching problems. The word got out about our group and kind of by word of mouth between teachers and um, we began to um, accumulate more members and um, some of the ones that um, uh, came at, at that time were uh, Catherine Rowland, um, Louise Angemeyer, Judy Wade, and um, Barbara Wolf, Ellen Holden. It was a very congenial group. It just got larger, and and uh, we had um, just a lot of wonderful participation. I think at the Netzor School they had uh, student gatherings, assemblies, where teachers, where students could play for other students, not as a formal recital. And I believe that they. Uh, that, and other teachers at that time had this uh, practice, and so we thought it was time, I'm not sure exactly what year, but we began to have uh, student assemblies in teachers' homes. It evolved into a, a scholarship competition, and the winners of the scholarship competition uh, played in an honors recital, and uh, that uh, we carried on for a number of years, and it was uh, there was some very, quite extraordinary playing by the students. But then there were students who were not, um, who could participate in an assembly, but were not um, candidates for scholarship competition. So it gave children on different levels an opportunity to play. And when there were students in scholarship competition, you know, there were, everyone was rooting for their students, but uh, aside from that, we, everyone were, was trying to help 
we were all trying to help each other and not trying to uh, um, interfere or to, uh, uh, it, it was a positive um, exchange, I think. People both in and out of OPTF generously contributed to the scholarship funds. The students that were recipients of scholarships were very well mannered and expressed their gratitude in the form of well thought out thank you notes. One winner hoped that he would even do better next year. Some of the most entertaining and instructive meetings have been the master classes. In February of 2014, the internationally acclaimed pianists, the Mac Duo, coached some of our members. OPTF has had many community outreach programs, such as Explore Music, that have been as varied as having master classes by world famous performers to teaching our students about music and emerging technology. It has also staged piano events benefiting various charities. Several of OPTF's members have had active performing careers in the Detroit area, among them Joyce Adelson, Barbara Wolf, and Colette Rosner. In 2004, OPTF celebrated its 25th anniversary with a special gala and concert featuring Scott Holden, a Juilliard School graduate, Fulbright scholar, and Carnegie Hall soloist that also happens to be the son of longtime OPTF member Ellen Holden. Also included were performances by students of OPTF members. OPTF began using social media like Facebook to post its schedule, photographs, and meeting highlights for the general public to see. going up to U of M for football games. I love being able to impart to somebody else uh, what I feel. And it wasn't just teaching the notes and the rhythm, and, but it was teaching children how to express themselves and to how, if they had certain feelings, that it would come out in their music. And um, uh, just, just being with young people. I've been with young people all my life. And music is just... That's my whole life. And uh, sometimes it's lonely because it's a one, but I got a piano partner and we played uh, together. That was, that was a big, big uh, 
enjoyment for me because it was social too and I like people. There's such a tremendous satisfaction when you take a student who when you, and they start at zero and you move them a little bit it, depending on their abilities and students have that's such a variety of personalities and abilities musical um, aptitude lack of musical aptitude mat, um, maturity um, eye hand coordination there's so many things that go into it so you have such a variety of experiences with, with students. It's almost never boring. I find that I don't know where the three hours went when I was teaching a group of students. I feel as though I were transported somewhere. And it is the greatest, greatest uh, satisfaction. Um, in recent years, the group has, uh, uh, the numbers have dwindled to some extent. Um, and, but there is a, a core group of people who are really uh, very intent on, on uh, keeping it going and sharing um, the kinds of experiences that we've had all these years. And it is a really, uh, it's a very special group. Uh, so I hope it goes on for a long, long time. <laughs>